everybody. This is Amber Striker here. Today we've got a couple of the real deep conceal pocket concealed carry guns. Either one of these is good for a pocket inside the waistband or out even that ankle gun. The one of the guns is a DB9, Diamondback DB9. These are both chambered 9mm by the way. And the new Mossberg MC1. Now the DB9 has been around for a while, but this is the Gen 4. This is the revised version and they really did make a lot of revisions. They made this gun actually comfortable enough and have feature laden enough that you really do want to consider it. It fits in with some of these others that we're going to compare it to. And Diamondback lent us this gun along with an AM2 to do some reviews on and some comparisons. So we headed out to the range up against this MC1 and we're going to talk about the, you know, the key differences and similarities and where one might work better for what you're trying to do versus the other. So let's start with the DB9. Of course we do have an unloaded DB9 and you'll notice the orange follower. That seems to be a thing lately. Everybody's going with the orange followers. I'm going to kind of set this aside till we're ready to work with it. A few of the features they added, and we do have a full review on that and we can go over it in the full review, but it does have a slide stop slide release which the MC1 has as well and it is a feature that on these really super small fit in your handguns is often missing. It has a six round magazine with a pinky extender or a flat base plate. The MC1, which is also unloaded and also has an orange follower, comes with a six round flush mag and a seven round pinky extender. Now the MC1 is new to the market. The DB9's been around in the prior generation for a long time and that's one important note. The DB9 has magazine compatibility with the older generation. You won't get it to lock back on the old mags, but on the new mags it will. And this one of course locks back with its mags or Glock 43 mags. So either one of these you're going to have a large availability of magazines. The clear mags that come with the Mossberg are available on their site, but they may be a little harder to find for a while. And the new generation mags with the DB9 the, the newest mags may be a little hard to find for a while, but the later generation mags, you know, the, the older generation mags should be readily available all over the place. Both guns have proven to be very accurate, as, as most pistols are, and easy to shoot well. Now this is a very, very thin frame, so for people with larger hands like Hammer, it can be a bit of a challenge to shoot it well. I was actually able to shoot it quite well. It fits my hand nicely. But if you've got a larger hand, you may find you want to put a grip sleeve on it. And other guns like this, the, the PM9 that Hammer has, he's got a grip sleeve on that. So it may come down to how it fits in your hand. But if you can get it where it fits in your hand well and it's comfortable to you, it's actually a very easy to shoot well gun. This isn't a belly gun. And this one isn't either. This one, is, the MC1, is also very easy to shoot well. Both of these have quite nice triggers, which is unusual in the small guns until recently. Usually the, the really small guns had hideous, long, heavy, double action only type triggers and weren't all that pleasant to use. So I got the MC1 in my hand, so I'll show you that one first. A little bit of take up, and it's got a flat face trigger by the way. It's a factory trigger. Kind of a sharp wall and a crisp break. Long-ish, but decent reset. Little, little hair of a take-up to get back on the wall. That same crisp break. Now, on the DB9, this is one of the places where it's, it's really been enhanced over the prior generation. It does have a curved trigger, and it's metal. There's some take-up. You're on the wall. And it's crisp, a little bit of creep, but not, not significant. And then the break. Both of these come in around the 6-pound territory. Kind of a shortish reset. You're right on the wall and then the break. So it's actually got quite a nice reset. The older one had a you know a heavier, longer trigger. They've really done a nice job on this trigger and made it to the point where it's easy to get really good follow-up shots. Let's talk about some of the dimensional information because that's one of the keys that you come into. When you've got guns this small, once you've made the determination that they're functional, then you know, what's the size of them? And you can see them side by side, and I'll compare them a little more closely later in the video. But the length of the DB9 is 5.73. The length of the MC1 is 6.25. The width of the DB9 is 0.89 when you consider the controls, and it's 0.81 at the slide. 
and the MC1 is 1.03. So the MC1 is a little bit fatter gun. The height of them with the flush mags is 4.0 on the DB9, 4.51 with the pinky extender, you know, if you had the flat, flat base pipe versus the pinky extender, and 4.3 on the MC1. So they're really similar in size other than the thickness and about a half inch of length on the DB9. Now where they're going to be significantly different is the weight. The DB9 is 13.4 ounces with an unloaded mag and the MC1 is 19 ounces with an unloaded mag. And when you're into this really you know, small concealed carry pocket ankle gun territory, especially if you got it swinging around on your ankle, this guy's going to win it for weight. I'd rather have this swinging around on my ankle than this. As you move closer to inside the waistband, that starts to become a lot less important quickly. The DB9 comes with one six round magazine, which with, you can either have the flat or the pinky extender base plate on it. The MC1 comes with a six round, and it also comes with this little pinky extender seven round. And of course, as I mentioned, it'll take Glock 43 max. And then speaking about Glocks and talk about the sights, the DB9 uses Glock pattern sights. It does actually come with very nice three dot bright, easy to see sights. So there really isn't an immediate compelling reason to want to change them. But if you're looking for night sights or fiber optic or TFO, pretty much anything you can find that'll fit the Glock 43 is going to fit this. That opens up a large range of possibilities for sights. That makes it just really easy to swap out. So the Mossberg takes Glock Max, the DB9 takes Glock Sights. The, the Mossberg also has very nice bright three dot sights and both of them have guns have dovetail sights. So you're going to be able to swap out sights, do what you want to do with them on either gun. But right out of the box, right from the factory, they come with good enough sights that they're going to do most things you want to do. Some of the features you've got, both of them are stainless steel barrel and slide. The DB9 uses nitride and the Mossberg uses NDLC. And that DLC coating, it's kind of smooth, but it's not slippery. It's actually a really nice coating. But the nitride on the DB9 is going to be equally durable. By the way, as far as the dovetailing goes, dovetail front and rear on the Mossberg, but in typical Glock pattern, because it does use Glock pattern or sights, the front one, there's a little screw underneath that you unscrew and you replace the front sight. So it's just like, you know, on the DB9, it's just like the Glock. The DB9 is now plus P rated. That was a change they made with the Generation 4, not plus P plus. Now, personally, I don't use plus P, but I know a lot of people, when you've got shorter barrels, this has a 3.1 inch barrel. Mossberg has a 3.4. You know, people like to go for the plus P to get a little bit more velocity. The DB9, which previously was not rated for it, is now rated for it. It has a steel guide rod and comes in a myriad of colors, including like a purple camo. Currently, the Mossberg comes in any color you want as long as it's black. I imagine they'll change that at some point, do some of the flat dark earth and, and other things. You commonly see these really small guns coming in a myriad of colors. That seems to be more common in this size category. From an MSRP standpoint, the MSRP on the DB9 is 269 their Gen 4 is not readily available enough as of the making of this video to come up with a street price. The MC1 MSRP is 425, but the street price is in the mid 350s. You know, so they really are both in that 300-ish territory with the DB9 coming in sub 300. Availability of aftermarket DB9 has been around long enough, even though there's some changes made. There is aftermarket support, but one of the things that Diamondback did is they worked with about six different holster manufacturers to make sure that day one, when this gun hit the street, there would be holsters available for it. And in our full review, we actually show one of the holsters that they sent us with it. The MC1 on Mossberg's site has a handful of holster manufacturers that make holsters for it. So either one of these are going to have holster availability. That's one of the things, along with magazine availability, that often is a problem with new gun launches. Gun comes up, you can't get holsters or magazines for it, and you know in many cases they come with one or two mags. Both Diamondback and Mossberg have really addressed that issue with both of these guns. So no matter which one of them you take home from the store, you're going to be able to set it up and get it running right away. Both of these guns worked day one out of the box. Uh, this gun was new when we got it. It hadn't been previously shot, hadn't been broken in. So we got it like we would have retail if we just walked into the store and bought it. 
and of course the Mossberg we bought ourselves, so it was new. Both of them, no break-in period, just load them, you know, clean them, oil them, load them, and start shooting, and it was day one they worked. The other thing I'll mention too, on the MC1, though it only comes currently in one color, it does come in a couple different variations, one with night sights, one with a pre-installed Viridian laser, a Centennial Edition that's kind of pimped out. So there's a couple different varieties of this from a feature standpoint. And this, the current DB9 comes in several different flavors. This one I'm sure will catch up with that. The, really the choices that come down to it is what is it you're looking for. Neither one of these is a bad gun and neither one of these is going to give you any trouble whatsoever. This is perfect for that ultra conceal. If you're looking for the smallest, lightest, 9mm you can get, hang it on your ankle or whatever, and there's just no weight to this thing. It can be also easily used inside the waistband. This could even be kind of a combo set. You get this for your ankle, your backup gun, you get this for inside the waistband or your pocket. You know, you don't have cross compatibility of magazines between these two, but this really is probably the smallest, lightest gun that I fired that wasn't ornery. This one works. A lot of them in this size territory, they're picky about ammo, they're picky about how you hold them, they're just overall you know, kind of difficult to live with. And this thing, you just load it, feed it, pull the trigger, and actually shoot very well. It's also relatively easy to rack, which is not common with these guns. A lot of the guns in this size territory are either very difficult to rack, or they're vague at the end. It's really easy to see that you know, you've cycled it fully. And the MC1 is about the same in racking and just as precise and positive to, to rack. So I like both of these guns actually. I'm really happy that Diamondback sent us this one to try out because we've enjoyed having this and enjoyed shooting it. It is a little stout on the recoil. It does, you, you know you've pulled the trigger, but it doesn't beat you up like some of these little guns do. They've done a really good job of balancing the slide weight and the recoil spring to make it very manageable to shoot. And this is starting to get into that, the Mossberg is starting to get into the territory where, you know, just the little bit larger size of it, a little bit more weight is gonna stay, start to tame the recoil just on its own. It doesn't really matter which one of these things you pick, they're really gonna do well for you, and you really can't go wrong with either one. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that little bell if you do. Check us out on Facebook and Patreon, and have a great day. Thank you.